Hey everyone, I'm Papa Boris, and it's time to do another run of Into the Breach. For this run, we're going to do the Frozen Titans. If you're not familiar, this is one of the strongest squads in the game, arguably the strongest squad of the original game before the Advanced Edition came out. And the big reason why it's so strong is this Ice Mech, which freezes the target. You can just freeze any enemy. There's no enemy that's immune to this, and it takes them out of commission. Not only does it take them out of commission, but it blocks the space that they're on. Sometimes other enemies will waste their attacks targeting it to break it out of the ice. You can also freeze buildings to protect them. You can freeze allies to protect them. Sometimes you can even freeze mission objectives, like the train, for example. You can freeze the train and prevent it from moving, which can be very helpful. This has all kinds of uses. Now, the balancing factor is that you also freeze yourself. So if you're not in a position where an enemy will damage you, or you're block blocking a spawn, or an ally can damage you to break you out of the ice, you have to spend your next turn repairing yourself to break out of the ice. Which, of course, would be a huge deal if you only were active two of the four rounds in a battle. But because of a quirk... In the game design, this is trivially bypassable. All you need is a shield. Shields make you immune to being frozen. So as long as you don't lose the shield, you can just use that ridiculously overpowered weapon with no downside. Now, Bethany is like the classic combo with this squad because she starts with a shield. It's a pretty mediocre pilot power, but it makes that ice mech unstoppable. Even better is if you've unlocked the alien, which is much more difficult to unlock, Mafan, the Zoltan. He also gets a shield. It respawns at the beginning of every turn, so it's a repeatable shield. And he also starts with an extra reactor core. Now, to, benefit, now to counteract this, his health is reduced to 1, and he cannot gain health in any way. But for this mech, that just means the health is going from 2 to 1. It's really not a huge deal. So it's just really, really, really strong. Uh, the other mechs here are the mirror mech, which shoots a bullet in two directions, and it does a push and a damage, just like the basic Riftwalker's brute weapon. One interesting thing about this is it's, I believe, the only weapon in the entire game where, or at least the only weapon of the starting weapons, where you can get plus one damage for just one power core. I'm not sure why that is, but that's a pretty cool feature of it. And the Aegis mech is actually one of the best prime mechs in the entire game. It's one of the best mechs in the game. It's just a testament to how ridiculously overpowered the Cryo Launcher is that this mech is on the team and is not even the star of the team. This deals two damage and it flips the direction of the enemy's attack, which is really useful. It's often better than a push because if the enemy is like in a corner and you are afraid of pushing it into a building or something, this does not push. Now that does mean that you don't get to like push things into water with this, but all in all I say this is usually better than a push, and you can get plus one damage for two cores which is fine, and you can also get a shield with it which is really cool, and is usually a better upgrade than getting plus two HP on your mech. So it'd be really hilarious if I lost this run, but if that's what happens, that's what happens. This squad is just really, really strong. Okay, let's talk about island selection. This squad's a little bit biased towards the ice island because there is that mission of um, freezing the robots. However, you have to be a little bit careful and really consider the boss because this squad's disadvantage is one of the mechs is just doing a freeze. It's not doing damage. So you have to be very careful about bosses that take a lot of damage to kill. This is the blob boss. So even though the enemies are fantastic, the useless boost prime mech, three enemies that all don't do a web, the blob boss you have to be very careful about because it's it's got three HP and when you kill it, it creates two blobs that each have two HP. And then those split up into blobs that have one HP and you have to kill five total blobs to win. So it's a little bit disconcerting because that is an HP heavy boss. You have to do like three, five, six, seven or eight total damage to kill all the blobs. You can get some discounts if you're lucky with pushes from the mirror mech. But I'm a little bit concerned about that. So even though with most other squads, this would be like an insta pick. Island. I wanted to see if there's anything with a pretty good selection of enemies and an easier boss. So here we have the starfish boss. Now the scion is the one that makes things turn into spiders, which is a little bit annoying. Um, the starfish, I wish I could remember how much health it has. It's, I don't remember, I think it might be on the lower end, but I'm not sure. Let's see here, we've got the armor. Now the interesting thing about armor is that if you freeze an enemy, it doesn't really matter if it has armor. Um, but it does have the spiders which jump, and the armor mech can be annoying, of course, for the other mechs to deal with. And then over here we have immune to fire. Okay, I believe that this boss has just five hit points, good enemies, fire immunity is whatever. 
let's actually not forget to spend my bonus power core and let's hop in here okay so here we're gonna have to do this mission if we want to avoid this one star mission so let's see what this is block vex spawning protect power generator spawning blocks are always a little bit scary of course because if you fall behind in the first couple of turns you can get really screwed this looks okay though we got um, our mech starting pretty close to where the enemies spawn. Of course, that doesn't mean that the, the spawning points we have to block are going to be there. Let's see. I could try doing some one of these other missions, see if I get a power core to help in this one, because the spawning can be a little bit tricky. We've got defending VIPs, pretty good mission. And the Acid Storms, also a good mission. All right, let's go ahead and defend the VIPs. This seems fine. So these cars, they can move, but only twice. So you have to be very choosy about when you decide to move them. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is actually start my mechs in this line to try to encourage these fireflies to shoot down this lane. And then I'm also going to stick the ice mech here. The firefly... Oh yeah, the firefly can't get up to the spot, so that actually is not a good place for the ice mech at all. Uh, I'm going to stick it here. Sometimes these moths will target your mechs when they're in front of a building because the moth's attack does a push. So if I can convince it to do that, that'll be nice because then I can just move out of the way and the moth attack will be wasted. All right, we're getting a pod here. This is great. So after this mission, we'll probably do that one mission that we have to do with the, with the blocking. Okay, this one got acid, which is great. The moth is wasting its attack a different way. All right, so the, two of the three enemies are wasting their attacks. Now, the one thing you had to be careful of is that we got to... Oh, no, this is not this is not the Vex spawn blocking mission, so I don't need to be careful about that at all. Okay, so the one thing we have to worry about is this firefly right here. I think that's going to be, well, it's interesting. So you could freeze it, it's next to a building. The main issue is, of course, the fact that the moth is really the scarier enemy because it flies. So that one's perhaps a better choice to freeze. Let's actually do that. Yeah, we'll freeze the moth. It's also next to a building, although maybe things aren't likely to get up there as they are to get here. So that actually might have not been the right choice. But it's what we're going to stick with. So now what we can do is we can go over here, punch this thing and flip its attack. That is going to mean I take a damage, but that's fine. And then with the mirror mech, we can block a spawn and kill this firefly because it's taking a damage doubled to two because it was in an acid pool and then three for pushing into a mountain, which is just perfect. No need to move the VIPs. I guess you could. You could just like move them far out of the way, but I like to keep them around because if they get targeted, then they can move and sometimes enemies will waste an attack on that. Okay, the fireflies are shooting at each other, which is great. How's that actually going to happen? Yeah, this one will take one damage, then this one will take one and die. So, uh, yeah, we don't really have to do anything this round. I mean, I could freeze one of them just for the heck of it, but then the other one would break it out of the ice. Yeah, so one consideration is to pick this up while you can in some missions. These can be a real hassle. However, since I'm going to be really on top of my spawn blocking, I don't think I need to worry about it. We'll just do that. And I'll fire a shot over on this building just for the heck of it, because I can. And then we can do this and repair, and we can go over here. Now, I have a choice. I could repair, or I could shoot this firefly. Now, who shoots first? This one. So that'll actually cause this one to die. But this one's going to die as it is. But if this one dies, then the remaining one has one health. Yeah, all right. I'll sacrifice. Actually, no. I don't want to sacrifice the health here, because there's one more round of spawns. I'm actually less concerned with these fireflies uh, than I am with making sure I can block one spawn on the next turn and shoot if it is not as good of a position as it was this round. So notice how awesome Mothan is here. You know, if this were Bethany and she lost her shield, she would now be freezing herself upon targeting enemies. Now, sometimes you can play around that. Like, for example, she could have frozen this firefly, get, it, get, get frozen herself, and then the Vex spawn would break her out of the ice. All right, the main of concern here is this guy, because if I move the VIP, he shoots a building. So we need to get rid of it somehow. Um, I'm trying to see how I can maximize my blocks. I can go here, block that spawn. Then I could, yeah, maybe I could just, uh, yeah, we'll go here. We'll freeze this firefly. This one is bigger, but um, I can actually just, oh, wait a minute, that's, that's a slight misplay. We need to shoot it first for two damage, and then we can go whack it. So there's a case to be made for um, 
not killing that one and blocking an extra enemy because the fireflies even the alphas aren't that big of a deal but there was some confusion there because it was shooting at my guy and i didn't want to spend too long figuring it out all right so what we got here is great the moth is wasting its turn the scorpion could have been annoying if it had targeted my freeze mech it actually would have been yeah what i would have had to do is i would have had to punch it to make it flip its attack to unfreeze my freeze mech and then freeze the scorpion because this thing can't quite reach the uh, scorpion it would need to have one more movement to get down here to be able to shoot it uh which actually would also be awkward because then it would it would punch the time pod but anyways it's just targeting the building so all that is irrelevant we can just freeze it i could i could try to find some way to shoot it oh but if i shoot it with the mirror mech it'll punch in the building yeah so we'll just freeze it i'm not maximizing my xp gains here although actually i guess i can kill this moth instead of moving the vip i can actually just shoot the moth dead yeah so we'll do that all right that was good Everything ends up frozen, never had to move the VIPs. A nice first mission. Yeah, oh God, you didn't have my phone out so I can see the time to make sure I don't go too late. Okay, so we got a time pod. Oh, we got a pod. It's Bethany. Oh man, that's hilarious. So yeah, that would have been a great find, of course, if I didn't already have Ma Fan. As it is, I mean, she's probably not gonna be that useful, but we'll just replace my the weakest pilot with her. I'm not going to analyze which of the two mechs benefits better from a single shield. It's kind of probably a wash. Okay, so this mission doesn't really help me get anywhere. It is a two-star mission. I'll probably want to do it at some point, but let's um, get an upgrade here. There's a lot of great choices. So plus one move, of course. This, this, this mech is just crazy. I don't know why it has four move. That's just insane. There are plenty of melee attack prime max is only three move but it just has a bonus move so getting an extra move on this mech if for positioning is really useful also uh, of course increasing the damage to two can be useful i am gonna take the more conservative approach i'd rather make the difference between being able to shoot at all or completely not being able to get in reach versus maybe doing an extra damage and killing something because i've already got pretty good killing power with the melee mech that does two damage and then of course my mech that freezes everybody all right so we got moths here well, I think we want to definitely start here to try to encourage it to maybe shoot this mech. Otherwise, I'm not really sure what I can do to encourage it to shoot at me. And I don't want to put this mech out of position just to hope that it shoots at me to bump into a building. I, I actually don't know. I don't know if like the fact that it bumps into a building actually encourages the mech to shoot those spots more. Okay, so this moth is wasting its attack and damaging itself and the scion which is great i can leave that alone i don't so basically i can shoot this moth and punch it probably there's a way i could do that yeah i can shoot it then go punch it then i'm not blocking a spawn um yeah i think i'm fine with that so let's go ahead and i think we need to sh shoot it first and then, thanks to my four move, I can go over here and punch it. And we'll go here, and we'll freeze this thing. I mean, if this were a, um, what's the face? Uh, not, if this were an enemy killing mission, I might have left this alone to have a two health enemy and a one health scion left over. But it's a spawning blocking mission, so that's much more important. Okay, well, let's see. I think I am going to just go here and freeze a building. This is the this is a mission critical building, but this one is more likely to be targeted by enemies. So we'll freeze that one. That's more likely to be useful. And you can go here to kill off the scion. So we're getting our three blocks that we need. An acidic firefly, I am really not worried about it. I'm actually just gonna let it be. I think getting an extra block is more important, even though I don't need it for the mission like worst case scenario i can always freeze this thing if it somehow gets totally out of control all right so it's wasting its attack targeting the enemy now you might say well it's not really a waste it is breaking it out of the ice for the following turn but you know that is a very non-mission critical concern and if you need to leave it alone you can just leave it alone so here i think what i can do is just shoot the scorpion if i could oh yeah hang on this is actually better I could, I could have the scorpion block the spawn and i think i am 
going to freeze this uh, acidified, extremely vulnerable firefly so it doesn't break the moth out of confinement. And we'll go ahead and get that repaired. So next turn, if the scorpion chooses to attack one of its frozen buddies, that is a waste. Because on the final turn of the level, you know, it don't care if they break a buddy out. Like, this is totally irrelevant because then the mission ends. All right, now we do have this, which is actually also irrelevant thanks to my repeating shield. I could, of course, consider if there's some way to, like, get a kill here. I don't think so. I think if I shoot... Yeah, I, if I shoot and push it, it kills that one. Um, but I'm one damage shy of killing this one. And that's fine. So had I taken the upgrade for my damage, I would have killed this and gotten some more XP for my people. But I, I'm still happy with my choice. I think it's more important to get into position than it is to do an extra damage sometimes. Anyway, I'm glad that that mission's over. Now we can take a look at what our options are. So obviously the two-star mission is a prime consideration. Destroying the acid vats, totally fine. Map seems average. There is this building here, which could be annoying and the starting things do spawn near the buildings. But one thing to note about this level is there is a lot of acid, like a lot of it. So the enemies are quite likely to start off, or to, 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 to move on to a place where they get acidified. Okay, that did not. And that one did, that's great. Okay, this actually works out really nicely. I'm gonna punch this thing for four damage, and then it's actually gonna target this, and because it's an alpha, it will kill it. Let's just make sure I can deal with the firefly. Yes, I can deal with the firefly. So, I should have my choice of how to deal with the firefly. Let's see, I think I'm gonna freeze the firefly, because if I don't freeze it, I'm kind of underutilizing my freeze mech this turn. Let's get into a bit more position here. We'll punch this thing, flip the... Oh, wait. Oh, no, that's actually good. I'm happy with that. So I am taking a damage that was not on purpose, but I do actually want this thing to die for free, and I'm willing to take a hit point of damage to accomplish that. And yeah, we'll kill the Scion. You can try to make the argument, like, I don't know the mechanics, if, like, having a Scion on the board um, counts as an enemy, so it doesn't spawn as many enemies in future turns, but I don't care. i just fine with killing it and getting the experience. Okay, so here we have some interesting choices. Uh, I could go up and punch this thing thanks to my four movement and kill it thanks to it being an, on acid. I could also just block more spawns and freeze this. You know, one of the problems is, you know, if you're constantly making the choice to freeze enemies, you're getting less experience for the squad and the pilots aren't leveling up as much. So that is a consideration. This, you might say, is a pretty comfortable level. So this could be a time to just like push the bounds a little bit more and get those extra XP points, but we'll take the easy way out. Let's freeze this thing. Let's go here. We need to break that for the mission. And then I think this spot is where I'd rather they spawn. Oh, yeah, Bethany. There's there's your shield. Woo, the shield. So relevant. Okay, so now we got this thing. Uh, this is about to die, so I can't punch. I didn't, unfortunately, get the gain shield upgrade, which would have been kind of handy. Uh, if I stand here with my mirror mech and then shoot it, it'll go here where it'll shoot a building. So, one, two, three, four. Can't quite be on a block spot. And, oh yeah, and I can't shoot this thing because it'll unfreeze that. Yeah, I'm starting to just take too long worrying about stuff. So let's just uh, punch it to change its direction. And we'll fly up here, because that's a more relevant spawn to block. You uh, will just sit tight. Didn't need the mirror mech that time. So now for our final turn, we are going to have three enemies to deal with. But we can freeze with impunity. The Firefly only has one HP. The Scorpion's a little bit scary. Okay. Probably would have been worse had it frozen my freeze mech. But I, it would have been fine. I could have punched it, flipped the attack, and then gotten kill the other one. So yeah, uh, let's see. We can just fly here. Freeze that. Save my person. Punch. And okay. What did I just level up and get the finisher? Nah, it's a pretty lame one. Pretty lame. So that gives you plus two move and boost on the final turn, which is so much ridiculously worse than opener, which is plus two move and boost on the first turn. Don't know why they even have finisher in the game. It's just a depressing one. 
But okay, I don't really, I'm not attached to her. I'm fine with selling her. I don't value the starting shield very highly. So it's nice to like level up like, oh, you got a crappy one and you can even like sell her and like put a different pilot in, hope that they level up and get something better. Here, we'll go for this one. This mission actually is a bit tricky. You gotta kill these Vexax at some point, which is tough because they're kind of out of the way and you can't shoot them with the mirror mech at all actually this is a consideration for maybe not have choosing chosen this mission this is going to be pretty tough because the the mirror mech basically has to be like here and it can shoot this one and that's it if it's here it'll hit the building here it'll push it into the building here it'll shoot that building i guess it could shoot from here so it's gonna have to be my aegis mech taking out these acid things because the enemies with all these mountains aren't likely to get up there it's a bit scary actually so i'm gonna go here try to encourage the firefly to shoot down this lane um, they only have two movements, so this lane, neither one of them can get there. I guess we'll just stick the mirror mech there just to not encourage it to shoot into the buildings. And then we'll stick my range mech there. But yeah, I actually need to be very aggressive about getting those sacks early on so that I don't fail that mission. So this Firefly, unfortunately, is shooting at a building. This one is shooting at the controller, which is fine. It does, like sometimes you don't want it to die right away, you know, you want it to kind of acidify the enemies for longer. But this is great, it just does two damage, so only one damage more is needed. The mirror mech does have angles to shoot at this safely to finish it off later with the one damage that it does. And all we have to worry about is this thing. So I think we're gonna be aggressive. I'm gonna get over here. I'm gonna get over here and I'm gonna punch. Whoops, that's not the right mech. <laughs> I'm gonna get over here with my four movement and I'm gonna punch that sack. Punching sacks, love it. And then we're gonna go here and we're gonna freeze the Firefly. And then you, luckily there's no buildings back here so you can just shoot the Scion. It's a little bit unfortunate that it dies, actually. I would've preferred if I could've blocked a spawn with it, but there's I don't have enough movement to get there. So that's fine. We are gonna have a couple of spawns here. So what I'm hoping is that the mirror mech and the freeze mech can deal with the three enemies that we're gonna have. Two moths, seems a bit unlikely. Uh, and then th that, that my Aegis mech can take another turn to punch this thing out of existence. All right, what is happening here? So this firefly is gonna get broken out of the ice and then the moth, well, the moth is shooting at a building. So I gotta deal with the moth. I can't just let the moth do that. Uh, I could go here and do this to, to keep this firefly in the ice, but then I also stop the acid. Yeah, what I'm gonna do, I think, is just fly down here to block a spawn, freeze the moth. Th oh, this moth is about to kill off the storm controller. Hmm. Well, let's get that egg sack, and I have a choice. So, I think I'm gonna just preserve this controller. You have to be very careful how you do that, but I don't like the moths. They can, of course, target anything. And what I'm hoping for is we get some like more fireflies or something spawning here, because they are just really hemmed in by these mountains. Scorpion's gonna be a problem. It's 100% guaranteed to web my range mech. Oh my gosh, it actually didn't happen. I think I would have been screwed. I think I actually would have been completely screwed if that had happened. I uh, need to file this one away for the, for the memory banks, because my other mechs would not have been able to get down there to save this flyer. And then Mothman would have died and that would have been a failed run. But I got super lucky that the two fireflies took up position in the spots where the, so the scorpion could stand. So the scorpion's actually just not doing anything instead. Whew, okay, so now what do we do? Well, the most dangerous enemy here is the scorpion. I can, of course, freeze it. Um seems reasonable. I could also break this mountain, have the Aegis mech come in and kill it. I think I'm gonna do that. We'll, we'll stand here to block a close-up spawn, break that mountain up, and then go here and we'll just whack and kill that thing. So now we're gonna have three fireflies and one more spawn, but the mission is gonna be completed and there was nothing good to shoot at from here, unfortunately. Okay, so these stay acidified because they were acidified, but the new one is not, and it's a scorpion again, so again, I'm worried about it freezing my flyer, which it will do. It has nothing else it can do. Luckily, it's the final mission, or final turn of the mission, so there's no Vex spawner. Mothman would have died if it gets punched by the scorpion, shield goes down, and then the Vex spawns and it dies. As it is, this is wasting an attack, this is wasting an attack. 
This is the only relevant attack. So I don't think I can get two kills here. Oh, ha! finisher! These so useful! Oh, yes! Thank God I got that. Well, it is all jokes aside, because of the boost, doing two damage instead of one, that is going to give me three extra experience on Bethany there. Not that it matters, because there's a really good chance that she's not going to be someone I take with me to the end game. God, if she had opened her, that actually would be pretty significant, because when, when you boost her to do two damage for one power core, and then uh, the, the boost makes it three instead of two, like that's actually kind of significant. But on the final turn, it's like, whatever. Alright, let's fight the Plasmodia leader. So this thing only has five hit points. But it's a very annoying leader. It shoots out like these little vine things that have two hit points and they shoot and push a projectile. So it's a bit of a problem sometimes. Uh, I guess we'll just stick Max kind of in these lanes to encourage it to send its Plasmodias to shoot down. I feel like a lot of the time, I, I don't know the science on this, I feel like a lot of the times it, it, it targets correctly. It'll actually like shoot at, you know, useful things to shoot at. Okay, this is a very awkward situation because I, I think I have to use my freeze mech to freeze this thing. Or I could let a grid get damaged, I guess. But the thing is, I can't shoot the boss to freeze it. I, I don't want to freeze a Scion. There's nothing else to do with my freeze, other than, I guess, sit here and block a spawn. But I think we need to do this, because the other mechs, the mirror mech can't shoot this, it'll hit a building, and the Aegis mech will be out of position. So let's freeze this thing. I think it still dies, I think? If it doesn't die, that's fine, it blocks a space, I guess. Now, what do we do with these? So I can go here, shoot and kill, and then with four movement, I can attack the boss. Alternatively... I could do this. I could go here, shoot in... Well, hang on. If I go here, I keep the sign alive. I also do one less damage because it's not getting pushed in. And then I block an extra enemy. So what do I value more? One extra damage or one fewer enemy? I guess when you put it that way, it seems pretty clear I should have one. Oh, jeez, I'm heaven! I totally forgot about that! Okay, well... That's a bit of a frivolous reset. I mean, one grid damage isn't the end of the world, but... I'm being a little bit cocky here. So now we are... Hmm, I mean, I could just not punch it and then have one fewer enemy spawn. That actually might be the correct play. Yeah, I'm going to block an enemy. I'm going to gamble that one extra attack on this is not worth having an extra enemy on the field to deal with. Especially because there's a decent chance that my freeze mech's going to have to be on Plasmodia duty. All right, no, this is a wasted one. It's not actually going to target anything at all. So that's great. Unfortunately, this thing kind of went far away now and is awkwardly out of reach. Hmm. I'm starting to be a little bit concerned about my life choices. If I shoot, I am one damage shy of being able to kill this thing. If I freeze it, then my Aegis mech can never get over to this boss, which is a real problem I'm concerned about. Crud. All right. I'm actually, I actually kind of wish I'd let an enemy spawn. Now I'm a little bit worried. So we're going to freeze the scorpion, but these things are just in the way and I can't shoot this one to push it because I'll also hit a building so crud I guess I'm gonna fire this and I'm going to do this and I hope that whatever plant this thing shoots out and whatever enemy spawns out of here is not that big of a deal so I can get access to this boss I've only got two more rounds to attack him in okay so this firefly is just gonna break its buddy out of jail because it has nothing else it can do okay Awkwardly, I can actually shoot and kill both of these and then move here and attack the boss, but then I will die because of the Vex spawn there. If I punch this one, I still die. And then there's this thing which is shooting at a building. Oh man, it's getting to be a little much. It's getting to be a little bit much. Shoot. Okay, we're going to make a bit of a weird play here. I am going to shoot and kill that off. I am going to go here and punch this boss, and then I am going to swing over here and freeze my own guy, so that when the Vex spawn instead of Vex spawns, instead of killing my mech, it just breaks him out of the ice. Now we're in a tough spot here, very, very tough spot, because we're going to have the Plasmodioid and four enemies to deal with, hoping some of these fireflies waste their attacks. Um, but I needed to do that so I could actually try to kill this boss. Okay. Well, the Plasmodia thing is wasting its attack. The Firefly is wasting its attack. 
But then we got a situation over here. These guys are definitely not wasting their attacks. So I have to be very careful. Um, I have to punch you to kill you, but can I save this mech somehow? I don't think I can. I think it's going to die. I'm going to lose poor Cinnabar over here. I think that's what's going to have to happen, though. I'd rather lose the pilot than fail the mission. She leveled up. Oh, got the opener. Oh, no, and then she's going to die. Yeah, because I can freeze one, but the other one will kill it, and I can't get in there with my shooter. Like, if I could have gotten in here to push this firefly out, I could have frozen this one. Ah, oh, what a shame. Okay, well, I guess we'll go here so that we can get a little bit of extra experience on Bethany and call it a day. I hope I didn't, like, miss some obvious way of saving this, but it's getting attacked twice and has only one hit point, so I didn't see any other way that I could do it. Too bad it just leveled up and got the opener. If it had leveled up and gotten the either plus two HP or skilled, which also increases its HP, I would have survived. If I had given it the ability that makes it have a shield on attack, the pilot would have also survived. So it is, you know, a little bit sad, but we get to still get a reward. Hopefully get something good here. Flying is actually great for this Aegis mech. This thing is interesting, but obviously the squad doesn't generate fire, so it's not gonna happen that often. Yeah, we'll take this pilot. I think that's a fine replacement for what was lost. And here, default is we're going to buy a bunch of cores. Anything good here? Okay, this is a weird one. So I have said before that um, you need to try to get weapons that are different from what you already have. And this is different because this would be for my ice mech. And the ice mech currently doesn't do damage. But this thing just seems crappy. Like, yes, I have Mothman with the regenerating shield, so the self-damage is irrelevant. But it's not very much damage. It's hard to control. I don't want to do this thing. What is this? Oh, throw a rock. Now, that is good. Because we've seen that in the previous run. It creates the obstacles. It's a ranged attack. Uh, even if you never upgrade it, that's a pretty solid item. Now, what I'm going to do is cry, because I am one star short after selling my pilot. If my pilot had not died, I could have sold the pilot and the other pilot and gotten this. I'm going to be greedy. I'm going to take reactor cores, because I need them right now. And I'm going to gamble I find something, maybe not, you know, this, but something else good at some point in the run. Because there's a lot that I want. I really want this gain shield. And I also really want this plus one damage. I actually also want this plus one damage here. So it's a little bit, you know, like there's like a lot. There's like a very high wish list. Um, right now, we'll just uh, give you... Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to give you flying, actually. I'm going to gamble that with four move, flying is better than a fifth move on land. And then next priority is going to be to get the plus one damage here. And I'm hoping after the next island that I'm actually able to get a good weapon. Because I'm going to be potentially sad that I let that rock go. All right, so what do we got? We got Starfish Leader with the Spiders Scion. The advanced enemy here is the Crab, which shoots in two places. It's, I think, one of the better, more easily managed advanced enemies. So that's a decent choice. I'm not a huge fan of the Spiders, but um, we'll see. We got Armor here. Okay, this is like the worst advanced enemy. That's the Spider Mama that shoots out little Spiderlings that web all the adjacent things they land on. So definitely hard pass on that. And then we got diggers. These are annoying. They create rocks adjacent to themselves. However, this squad can freeze the digger. The other enemies are pretty easy. And now I'm more comfortable dealing with the blob since I did get the damage upgrade on the mirror mech going into it. And well, you don't have the damage thing here, but I might be able to get it because we now have a mission that gives a power core. And on top of that, if I get a time pot in one of the other missions, I can put both of those cores in here and have the plus one damage so I can one shot the starting blob, which could be really significant. Now this looks like a pretty tough mission. We have to break five buildings out of the ice and one of my mechs cannot contribute to that. So if the enemies don't cooperate, this can be a problem. Let's take a look at the map. Actually, it's a pretty good map. We've got the buildings right there. The XX are in good spots and the enemies are somewhat balled off by mountains. Basically, you might put this off to hope to get a time pod and have a power core to help you. What is one power core gonna do for me? Eh, plus one move. I guess that could be useful. Let's see, freeze and defend both. All right, now th this, this is easy street. This, uh, there's only one enemy to start. What the heck, that's, this is like ridiculously easy. So, well, with this squad, cause you have a freeze, you can freeze them both in the first turn usually. 
and uh, call it a day. So let's try to encourage our friend the laser bot to shoot down one of these empty lanes. And we just have this crab to deal with. It's a little bit weird. This is hard difficulty. I'm not sure why uh, there's only one enemy on the field. And we're getting a time pod. My goodness. Wonders are just never ceasing. Okay. Great. So, and the crab is even wasting its attack. It's just perfect. Oh my gosh. This just cannot be more perfect. So we're going to block a spawn. Shoot the crab. Have it block a spawn for us. We can... Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. We can just go here. Freeze that mech with our helper bot, and then freeze the other mech with our freeze bot. Oh, you didn't even- you didn't even move! You didn't even have to do anything! It's all taken care of before, like, the, the overpowered mech even, like, has to go. Okay, uh, I will just attack a random empty tile because that gives me a shield. And, yeah, we're off to a pretty good start here. So now both robots are frozen, we can use this helper bot just to freeze enemies. The what comes up is a scion. Oh my Oh my goodness, that is terrific. All right, so I cannot get in lane to shoot this while also blocking a spawn. It's attacking one of the robots. Uh, I don't want to miss out on four experience. We'll let an enemy spawn. We'll let an enemy spawn. Let's go ahead and freeze the mirror max so it doesn't take a damage and we will just punch this crab to get four experience. Oh yeah, you. I could have actually, hmm, I could have actually cashed this thing out uh, to block a spawn and then not had it. That might have been, might have been better. But honestly, I don't even mind farming for experience here because it's just such a ridiculous situation. Okay, so here, I mean, just take your pick of what you want to do. I guess if I push this thing over here, it'll kill Mafan. So we'll just punch it like that. It's on fire, so it'll die. Can't shoot, unfortunately, because that'll kill that. Unless I put this thing in the way to block it. Oh, man, we're going to do it. This is a bit frisky, but we'll just block the building from being hit. And then you are fine where you're sitting. Don't need to do anything. This thing dies. So we have one enemy to deal with. Probably want the experience to go to Prospero because he's closer to leveling up than Bethany. And because Bethany rolled, like, leveled up already and rolled a crappy trait. So I want him to get this to HP. That is honestly not the best because he gets a shield every time he attacks. I've had some, I've had plenty of runs, well I don't know about plenty, I don't know how many times I've played this game total, but I've definitely had a number of runs where I never even bothered with the plus two HP upgrade on the Aegis mech just because the gain shield was better than the bonus health. But in any case, we now have plus one power core, so we'll put it on him because we're going to use it to get the plus one damage. In the meantime, might as well give himself a move, and let's go do this mission. All right, so we're trying to break buildings out of the ice. Let's take a look at what's going on here. This digger with three movement can't do anything, so that's actually great. It's just completely walled off by these mountains, which is great because it's like the most scary enemy that we've got. Um, I'm not actually sure what the correct placement is for mechs. I guess we'll put the mirror mech in the lane of the Hornet. Those are going to be my primary freeze targets because the digger is so out of position and we got to try to break buildings out of the ice and freeze things. Okay. Well, it's actually a little bit scary that the enemies are all wasting their attacks because I want them to be breaking buildings out of the ice. Oh, man. So... I could, oh yeah, I'm flying, yeah, right, right. So I'm gonna go here to block a spawn and kill a crab, get a shield. That does mean that I'm in range of the digger, but that's fine. I could have finagled it to try to like make it so the digger would attack me and these sacks. Um, you don't fly, unfortunately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take an opportunity to break that sack and then you are going to freeze either the digger or the hornet. I am more concerned about the hornet than I am about the digger. So we're gonna put myself in position here, freeze this hornet. And we need to start getting really aggressive about breaking buildings out of the ice and getting the, basically getting the missions completed because it's gonna be a little bit of a scary situation. The break buildings out of the ice objectives can really get out of control if you're not careful. 
Okay, so here the Hornet will break a building out of the ice and not break its buddy out, which is great. Uh, I basically need to freeze either this Firefly or this Digger. I guess I'll freeze the Firefly simply because the Digger I can just kill with my Aegis mech. And not have it bother me. And then the Janus or the Mirror Mech, I have two choices. I can just break two buildings out of the ice here. Or I can go here, get some damage on this Hornet, and break one building out of the ice. I am very concerned about breaking these buildings out of the ice. So I'm going to actually choose to break two. This Hornet will break out one more. And that's actually kind of a big deal because it means I only need to break out one more in the next two rounds. Main of course, concern, of course, is that now there's two enemies spawning. This is great. The uh, Firefly is totally blocked out. Can't do anything. Oh, it can walk through. Oh, I forgot. It can walk through its frozen buddy. Right, I forgot about that. Okay. So, thankfully, the flying here is actually really useful. I can go here, and I can punch this. And I'm lucky. The Firefly, if it had chosen to attack this one, I would have needed to freeze it. But as it is, it's breaking a building out of the ice for me, which is great. So, you... I think just want to block a spawn and then you need to shoot this rock and the reason I'm shooting this rock is that a I don't need to break a building out of the ice and B I want to make sure that this mirror mech can step in here and shoot this uh, egg sack if it needs to so we got one new enemy it's a hornet which is not good because it can fly out of this wall which is unfortunate all right, so this is wasting its turn shooting out its buddy. This is not wasting its turn. Okay, could have been better, could have been worse. It might, you might think like, oh, well, Boris, if you hadn't shot this building, the Hornet would be breaking two of the ice. Yeah, that's true, but you don't know that's gonna happen. I've lost this mission so many times because I keep waiting for the perfect time for the enemies to target, target the buildings and they never do. So my mirror mech cannot shoot this Hornet without causing damage to the grid. I could freeze it. And that's actually totally fine. Yeah, that's a totally fine way of dealing with the issue. There might have been some clever way of doing it, but basically what I want to do is shoot the egg sack because I need to, and then I need to punch this hornet. And then the firefly wasted its attack. Had the firefly targeted a different building, we would have had to do some thinking about how to deal with that situation. I think there probably would have been a way, but it was nice not having to worry about it. Okay, so we got the difficult mission out of the way, which is fantastic, and got a power core. So this is going exceptionally well. Now I can pop open my Aegis Mac, take out this move, put in a core. I, I am going to want this move eventually. Um, but yeah, now we've pretty much got everything. I don't want to spend three power cores boosting this. I mean, I can get plus two health here. This mech can't get any upgrades right now. So it's kind of like a choice. You know, we might do a two island run, which the other ones have been as well, which is kind of weird and random. I, I don't normally have two island runs that much, but uh, it might be another two island run, or if I get a good weapon, I might go to a third island to try to upgrade it. I like this mission a lot, so you have to be a little bit careful with this squad because you have to hit this thing twice, and only two of your mechs do damage, so you have to commit both your Aegis mech and your Mirror mech to shoot this thing if you want to get the cannon bot on the first turn. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put every single mech in this lane and hope that that encourages the Firefly to shoot down that lane so that when I move all my mechs out of the way, it breaks the facility for me, which is exactly what's happening. So that's great. So now I need to see if I can maybe get this thing on the first turn. I would have to commit my mirror mech to go here and shoot this shield off. And then when the Firefly shoots it, the bot becomes mine so order is very important here and it sucks unfortunately this cannon bot is going before the firefly so it will shoot and damage this building unfortunately before the firefly hits this dome and gives it to me so what can we do about that well i'm not going to think about this too much let's just do kind of the obvious move so we'll bust it open we'll go here block a spawn kill a crab which i know is not a crab but i'm going to call those crabs and then we're just going to use the freeze mech to protect this building so that this cannon mech doesn't do any damage to it note that fire does not damage buildings somehow i don't know why that's the case but that's great so now we just have the firefly and one new enemy to deal with and we have the bot okay the digger is just doing its digger stuff all right let's think about the situation here uh, yeah we'll just do the obvious we'll block a spawn Freeze this dangerous enemy. 
punch this thing, get a shield, and then you can't really do much, but uh, you can at least get closer to rejoining the action. And then you can block a spawn. I'm gonna I'm gonna cash in this shield. I'm gonna just gamble that the loss of the shield is worth it in exchange for having one fewer enemy on the board. Okay, so we have the digger who only has one health. And he's trying to bust his friend out of the ice. We got a crab here. Trying to do that. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll just keep it simple. Let's just finish off the digger. And then we'll go ahead and freeze the crab. Cannon bot, got nothing to do, sorry. But uh, we'll block another spawn. And I think that's all we gotta do. So we basically just have two enemies to deal with here. A couple of hornets. Well, they're not alpha, which is nice. They can fly away, which can be really scary. That can definitely cause problems. Uh, luckily, nothing terrible happened here. We can just shoot that one to death and punch this one to death. And that's that. All right, how many missions are left? Two more. Okay, so we're getting... No, sorry, one more, one more. I could have gone up here, but it still would have been three total stars, one, two, three, or one, two, three, but this is a harder mission. So now we're just getting an extra star. I probably would like some power grid here. So kill seven enemies. This squad does not like it. Now I did upgrade the damage on both my mirror mech and my Aegis mech. So it's not as bad, but I definitely am curious what this is. Yeah, we're going to do this. So Ice Storm is great because I have two characters who are immune to the ice. It can freeze enemies for me. And this is a good map, too. A lot of stuff in this back row is great. We're going to want to freeze this thing as soon as possible. Digger is definitely, like, it has no other choice. It has to come up here and target that, so I know what it's doing. Ah, uh, then it puts up rocks, and I can't get at it. Hmm, that's actually kind of annoying. I might actually freeze the digger on the first turn, just because I don't have any other option of dealing with it, short of, like, I guess, punching a rock and then shooting it. But any hoodle, let's, uh... Put these here, maybe the Hornet will just step up and target the two of them. We'll put that there, so that gives the Hornet the option to fly up here or fly up here and waste its attacks that way. Firefly, and that is one of the weaknesses of this map. There's a building in every single lane, so there's no way to waste the Firefly stack. Well, this is really lucky. The Digger has no choice but to step up here, but now it's getting frozen, so I don't have to worry about it. The Hornet's getting frozen, so I don't have to worry about it. Wow, lucky days. All right, so we're just going to keep it really simple here. I mean, I could punch it and, like, try to kill it off later, but we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to go over here. We're going to freeze it. We are going to go over... I can't quite get to the spawn point. Uh, we're just going to go here, then. My mirror mech couldn't shoot it without causing damage, so I'll let the mirror mech... Oh, wait a minute! <laughs> mirror mech doesn't have enough movement to block a spawn. Oops, that was silly. All right, we'll let the enemy spawn. I'm going to repair here just to get that mite off. Perhaps it would have been better to have my Aegis mech go here and block a spawn, just because that scion is irrelevant. All right, so the hornet's getting frozen, which is great. This thing I can kill, which is great. Okay. So I am going to... I could go block a spawn down here. I think we'll do this. I'm going to go here and just repair. Um, we'll do this. Kill the crab. And then you... I could, like, freeze a building just to have it be frozen. But I think what makes even more sense is just to repair and get the mite off. So I don't have to worry about that mission. And yeah, this is great. So the two buildings the enemies can reach are both frozen. There's only one enemy I have to worry about. Actually, all th my entire squad can stand on the ice because these two start with shields, and then this one gets a shield when it's attacks. Uh, that's hilarious. All right, but I don't want to stand there. I want to stand here so that I can... Oh, shoot. No, that's not right. I want to stand here, push it, then fly over here and kill it, and then you can fly in here, and you have a shield, so you're not going to get frozen. And we'll freeze that building because we can. That's what we want to do. Right, well, we're living the dream here where we have no enemies in the final round. So I guess I did not have to worry about the mechs, mites, uh, because I just had everybody repair on the last turn. And that was great.
So yeah, this squad, with that little hack of the cannon mech, or the, uh, the ice mech not freezing itself just as long as you put a pilot with a shield on it, is just really, really strong. I don't know if it's my favorite squad. I mean, I like it a lot. There's just some that I find, like, subjectively just a bit more fun. But this is, you know, in my opinion, the strongest squad of the first eight squads in the game. So here we got our large goo. It breaks apart into smaller goos. I want the digger to not be encouraged to move up. I don't want it to come up here and put up rocks. I think that's going to hurt me more than it helps me. So I really want to make sure not to put a mech in that square. But otherwise, I'm not really sure if it matters too much where my mechs are placed. It's nice that we got lanes for the can the mirror mech to shoot. Okay, and that's wasting its attack, which is great. So I can come over here, shoot and kill it, damage the digger, which is great. I can actually also come here and freeze the digger, and then also kill the crab. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to seemingly get out of position. And the reason for that is that I want, in case one of the blobs to let that falls in this lane, to be able to shoot it. I think that's actually better than killing this crab because I want to make sure that I don't get into the position that I got in last time where like I got you know a mission that I'm not able to complete so we'll do that one because this one's a little bit out of position all right things are getting a little bit scary perhaps I was a little bit aggressive with these blobs maybe I should have just killed the crab and let the blobs be because now there's a bunch of blobs running around and it could cause problems and then the crab is going to be shooting at things and that can cause problems okay well, the nice thing is that three enemies chose to waste their attacks, and the crab is the only thing that's actually doing anything. So I could just freeze it, even though it's a low-impact enemy. I could just freeze it to take care of it and then go blob hunting. Yeah, I think we'll do that. So we're gonna we're just going to kill that. That's a, that's a pretty easy move. And then I'm actually going to kill this one, because the big one is wasting its attack, so I might as well kill the little one, just, to, just for predictability's sake, because I know that... This isn't going to, like, spawn two blobs somewhere that could cause problems later. I call them blobs. I guess they're called goos. I didn't know that, sorry. Or I knew that, but I didn't remember it. All right, so this scarab is causing issues. This blob needs to be addressed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot it because the mirror mech is maybe a little bit less flexible. Yeah, like, this Aegis mech can come up and destroy one. But right now, I want to... Uh, I think I'm gonna just freeze it. And then we'll... I have to be careful. I could run down here and block a spawn. Then these, if these blobs get up to trouble, my Aegis mech is wildly out of position. And you can go one, two, three, four. You can't actually, like, freeze a thing here. So I'm actually gonna let an enemy spawn. I am more confident that I can deal with two new enemies who are really far away from the buildings than I am that I can deal with uh, two blobs that make bad targeting choices with my Aegis mech down here. Okay, so this is a piece of cake. Uh, my Aegis mech cannot kill this Firefly, but that is fine. Uh, we will just punch the last goo, which I didn't even need to. We'll go here. Freeze this. And alright, Bethany, you can have some experience and you can kill this Ion. Alright, so I'm going to have to make a difficult choice after this, whether to do another two island run or try to get a weapon and build up power on a third island to make the final mission easier. Let's see what we get. So this is not great. This is so bad. I don't even get it. Like, there is a smoke weapon that can target anything on the map. It is not a science class, and it's, it's, it's just a, it's a neutral class, so it doesn't actually cost anyone any power cores. This costs a power core if you're not using a science class, and this is only adjacent. Ally immune and plus one use for power cores just seems terrible. This guy is whatever, and technician heals for one is not that useful. So we'll get the grid defense, and let's take a look at what weapons are on offer here. Oh man, this is a laser, but it, we talked about this before. This is the worst laser. The one that does damage, more damage closer is better, and the one that bends is the best. This is whatever. This is fine. This is actually pretty good for my brute mech because what it does is it gives me something to do and I'm not able to fire my mirror shot in two directions. But this is not good enough to like go an extra island. 
So here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to just very carefully check how many power cores I actually need. I definitely want the plus one move. I don't care about the plus two health because I guess I ended up with Bethany and she's got a shield. And then you don't have anything. I only need one power core. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy this. I will buy this. And then I'm going to take another look at what's going on now that I've done this. So I definitely want the plus one move. Absolutely. Don't need the health. You, do you care about upping the damage to three on this? I've already got this that does two. Having something that does three damage could be useful. That would require two power cores, but I only can buy one. And if I don't get that, there's nothing I can do with one that matters. So what I'm going to do is sell my extra pilot, and this is going to look kind of weird. I'm actually not going to buy a power core. I mean, I could. I could actually sell Bethany. <laughs> And then buy two power cores and up the damage. Oh, man, that's an interesting option. Hmm. The shield is not that useful. She is then only at three health. But I would have a potential to do three damage. Is that better? I mean, there's a lot of alphas in the final mission. But not everything is an alpha. Three damage does make the difference in some cases. The alternative is I just get a bunch of grid defense. All right. Because it's the more fun thing to do, I'm going to sell Bethany and do this. But that's probably wrong. It's it's actually probably correct there to, um, if you're going to do a two island run, which I guess I'm doing, because I guess that's just what I do now. It's weird. I, I don't normally actually do two island runs all that often. Um, but it's probably correct to actually um, keep Bethany and just raise your grid defense. And then whatever, you know, is that time when, like, you could not do, or let alone, like, the extra damage from two to three really would have made a difference, hopefully the grid resistance would have helped. Okay, so we got a pretty tough situation. We got our blobber friend. Normally, you'd want to, like, put things in our line like this, try to encourage the blobber to waste its attack, but I don't want to get frozen. I pretty much don't want anybody in the squad to ever be frozen, uh, webbed. So we're going to kind of put things out of position. I think I want the mirror mech to be the most centralized because this one flies and has a lot of movement. Yeah, we'll try this. And then it's just time to cross your fingers and pray. Hope that the pylons land in good places. Hope that the blobber and the digger go to reasonable places. This is a pretty scary start. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Oh Christ. Oh Jesus Christ. This is, this is going to be a shit show. Well, hopefully we don't die here and um, we can, you know, survive in the next mission. All right, this honestly could have been a lot worse. Like, a lot worse. Okay, so we can do a few different things. Um, I really want to kill this blobber because it's just so annoying. I also really want to kill the digger because it's very annoying. Now, can my weapon kill this digger? Oh, look at that extra... Actually, I don't think it matters. Yeah, because it would have done two, pushed for three, and then the rock would have been pushed in four, so the damage does not matter. So I could, I could push it and kill it. The issue is that my prime mech does not deal with the scorpion because it attacks in four directions so flipping the attack does nothing and also um this i need to punch it however i could freeze the scorpion and then punch this and just let the enemies spawn like crazy in exchange for killing the digger now am i that concerned about the digger well if i go here and i push it I do damage that. Oh, no, I would just push it with my regular weapon, right? I could I could actually do this, which would damage it, block a spawn, block another spawn. I could freeze the digger. Oh, yeah, this is smart. This is much smarter. So I leave this boss up, which sucks because he's going to probably web something. But it allows me to get rid of the digger. And it allows me to... Well, I'm not killing the blobber. I could have actually gone and killed the blobber and then let the grid take two damage, but I'm going to be greedy. I'm going to try to hold everything. So we're going to have four enemies to deal with, basically. The blobber blob, the hornet, the scorpion, whatever spawns here. I'm down to a rather precarious two hit points because I don't have a shield. Ooh, the scorpion might actually... Nope! If I had stepped here instead of there, oh, the scorpion would have killed itself. That's unfortunate. Okay. Well, the Hornet wasted its attack, which is actually pretty incredible. So, let's see. One obvious move is to go here and push the Scorpion to its death. Then can I deal with the Hornet and the Blob? I mean, yes. All right, I'm not going to think about it too much. Let's just do it. I think. Yeah. So, now that this thing can move, we're going to go here. Is that how I'm doing it? Punching and killing the hornet and freezing this thing? Or stand here? 
either way yeah either either way um oh wait a minute what am i talking about i need to I, i'm not doing anything to this hornet i need to do that thing so i can either freeze that thing or i can punch it does it make a difference uh yes it does actually make a difference oh no because if i stand here to freeze that hornet right i i get attacked and then a uh, uh vac spawns kills me okay 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 so we're gonna go ahead and kill the hornet and find some spot I can stand freeze this blob, weird as that is. So, where are we now? We've got the blobber, the hornet, and one new enemy. This is actually an improvement from the previous round. So, I'm feeling very cautiously optimistic about the situation. This thing can't block any more spawns. There's going to be one more spawning ground. We got a scion, which will kill this if I don't deal with it. So, i got to be very careful about how I handle that. The Blobber at least won't be around in the final round, which is great, but I'm concerned about the Scion. Okay, well, we have a couple different options. Unfortunately, the Mirror Mech and the Aegis Mech both fail to address the Hornet, so the Hornet should get frozen, because if I flip the attack, it hits this pylon, and if I push it up, it hits this pylon, so I need to freeze that, and then what else is left to do? Kill the Scion. Right, so let's uh, just go over here. Wait a minute. How am I dealing with this? Right, this needs to go here. Kill the Scion. And then the push is irrelevant. We're just going to freeze it no matter where it lands. And then we're going to go here, and we're going to punch that thing. And thank goodness the Blobber stepped onto Hot Lava and died. A little bit scary. Three enemies spawning. Would have been scarier with the Blobber Blob. Luckily, there's no Blobber Blob this time. Crab is good. Hornet is a little scary. Scarab should be okay. Well, let's see what happens. So the crab does not waste, the hornet does not waste, and the scarab wastes. Okay. So, I'm going to do the cool move. I'm going to go here, I'm going to shoot my fancy weapon, which pushes the first one and the second one and damages the second one. It doesn't actually kill either one, um, but that's fine. And then it's going to die. But it doesn't matter because it's an autopilot, so it doesn't matter if it dies. And then you're going to get three experience. This thing, eh, it would have been nice for it to level up and maybe get a useful ability. But, uh, I'll save you! I'll save you! But no, it's still going to die because of the environment. Oh, hey! More experience! Cool! Blah! It dead. Blah! Alright, so now we go to the next level where the autopilot comes back to life and the mech somehow comes back to life as well which is always amusing i don't know how he managed to pull that off but uh we're doing some mid-air repair okay got a blobber again and a digger again oh, jesus at least we got the firefly you know with the double attack double direction attack and four damage this thing can be scary but i've got two things that can shield it blocks line of sight it all kind of depends on where they choose to where they choose to target their attacks, how annoying it is. Hey, Blobber, you want to stand under some falling rocks, please? You want to please stand under some falling rocks? Oh, one more step. Falling rocks. Oh, come on! Ugh, oh, Jesus. All right, well, we got some issues here. Uh, it's going to be tough. So, I could just punch this to get some damage on it and... Um, block it with my shield that I spawn. Main issue is can I deal with this digger? Oh, it's only the two health digger. Okay. So I can... I wish I could use my freaking thingy to kill the digger and this blob, but they're at right angles, so I cannot. Hey. Alright. Well, I think I'm gonna go here and freeze this. Like I talked about before, it's nice to be able to get onto a spawn point because if you do that, then um, when the claws come, it takes out a spawn. And I'm actually going to be a little bit frisky here. This is probably not correct, but I am going to do it. I'm going to just kill the... Oh, this thing has four hit points. It's an alpha. you got to be freaking kidding me. Oh, Jesus. Uh, okay. Well, that definitely makes my move not correct. Uh, well, I don't know what I, there's this, there's this, there's that and that. There's so many things to deal with. I don't know if I could have dealt with everything. Alrighty. Well, we're going to punch the digger and we're going to shoot and kill the blob blob. 
So I take a grid damage anyway, and the blobber doesn't die. So we have the blob and three other enemies. But hey, this is what having a high power grid is for. Crab is good. Hornet can be a bit scary if it flies to some weird place. Please shoot the bomb. Okay, so shooting the bomb, which is great because it's a wasted shot. The bomb has some hit points that you can work with. Crab's wasting his attack. Hornet is not. Okay, let's look at the situation here. Um, what if I use my see-through weapon? Oh, because it passes through the blob and then the rock is there. That would have been amazing. If I could have shot this thing, it would have dealt three damage and put it onto a spawn. Now, I could do some shenanigans, I guess. I could punch a rock and then shoot it, get this on a thing, and then can I freeze the hornet? I can. That's a little weird, but I think it's what I'm, simply what I do. Wait, no, that's a bit... That's a bit silly. I want to kill this thing, not push it. Because if I push it, it still does great. I, mean, I, I, need, I need to kill this thing. Step here, and then use my phasing weapon. Look at that extra damage! It's probably not worth it. Alright, now, I could let another grid go and freeze the alpha so I block a spawn, but we'll be a little more conservative here, since I already cashed in a bit of grid defense, and I'm cashing it. Well, I guess I, I would have saved a damage on this bomb. But I think this is pretty good, honestly. A Firefly Crab, not the scariest enemies. Blobber's dead, thank god. And we have one new enemy, which is a bit out of position. Like, it can't go across the lava. Alright, so this thing will kill the bomb, because now the bomb does only have three hit points. Gotta be a little careful about that. Um, I could do a phasing shot here. Three damage. It will do grid damage, unfortunately, so I'm not super jazzed about it. Okay, let's just do this. Punch this. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's shooting two away. It's going to finish off the grid. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Okay, it's a little bit of a weird situation. I don't actually know that it's trivial to stop all of the things. Um, if I freeze the crab, how do my other... Yeah, my other people can't deal with this guy. Because if I go here and shoot, I damage the core. And if I do a phasing shot, it pushes this thing. And this thing along with it. Um, and if I flip this, it does... Well, it's only one grid damage. Okay, I'm going to do this. It is only one grid damage. I will do this. So I'm, the mirror mech is body blocking the firefly. This blocks a spawn. And I can now just... Uh, well, I can freeze it. Yeah, I want to... Well, I freeze it, then it unfreezes, blocking a spawn with two hit points. Now, I want to freeze the pylon to prevent the damage, and then it blocks a spawn and has one hit point. And I take the other grid damage here, which is annoying, and I'm kind of miffed that I wasn't able to stop it just for bragging rights' sake, but that's just how it is. And now we have four enemies to deal with. One of them is a Scion, which is irrelevant because this is the final turn, so it doesn't matter if anybody dies. And my bomb has three hit points, so we can take a punch. But for principle's sake, we'll see if we can protect everybody. So, uh, let's see. You are fine. You are doing damage. You are wasting your attack. Okay, so... I can't do a phasing shot here because it would cause grid damage. Oh, that's really frustrating. You want to... Oh, 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 I got it. I know what I'm doing. So we're going to punch the Scion to death. And then we're going to have the AI bot die in both of the final battles. And then we're going to... Uh, you know what? For, for coolness, we're going to block the spawn and freeze the pylon. There we go. So now chop into the lava. And then you break open the ice. And then that's the game. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. If you want to stick around to see my score, feel free. But if you want to just close the video at this point, that's totally fine. Because nothing else is going to happen. I believe this was a perfect score. Well, no. A perfect score is if you make it through all four islands. Because like your score is basically like how many lives you saved. And so you need to go to all four islands to save the maximum number of lives, which is a bit irrational, because once you destroy the hive, doesn't that save the earth? So it's, it, it would follow that all the people on the other islands should also get saved. Did I take, did I take damage at some point?
in a mission? I don't remember that happening. Eh, most of that happened. Well, yeah, whatever. It wasn't a perfect one. So thanks anyway so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.